So I promised you all a Black Sabbath lesson or two and I thought I'd kick things off today with a look at the track Snowblind. Uh, if this goes down okay I might well look at some more Sabbath a bit later in the year. Now this track recorded in 1972 I think, or the album came out in 1972, uh, taken from this album Black Sabbath Volume 4 and I've actually had this record since I was a kid and it's long been a favourite of mine. I think uh, maybe my favourite Black Sabbath record. I think the playing and the songwriting are all really strong on this album. Now the song Snowblind is Black Sabbath so obviously it's chock full of amazing riffs but we've also got a couple of nice guitar solos as well which I'm going to take you through. I think the main focus of this video is going to be on the riffs but I'll certainly talk a little bit about those solos as well so let's get to it. So I'm going to take you through this riff by Mighty Riff, starting with the introduction. And the first thing I want to talk about is the tuning. I'm tuned down here and I'm tuned down one and a half steps or a tone and a half. So the low E string is now a D flat or a C sharp. All of the other strings are tuned down by the same amount. So we've got an F sharp, a B, an E, a G sharp, and another C sharp. It just means everything is lower and heavier sounding. You can of course play this tune in standard tuning if you wanted to. Um, all of the shapes and the fingerings will be the same. In fact I've seen some Sabbath live footage back in the day when they played the song in standard tuning as well so it certainly works. It will just sound a bit less heavy. And as I'm describing these riffs to you I'm going to be talking about them as though they were in standard tuning. So this is going to be an, an E chord uh, rather than a, uh, a D flat chord. I think otherwise we would get hopelessly confused. So this opening riff then we've got some power chords. Just nice simple fifth string root power chords. We've got an E, F sharp, G, D and E power chords. And then we've got an arpeggiated C and D chord. So just a standard open position C chord. And we're just picking out the notes individually from low to high. So starting on the root and then coming back down again. Then we're doing a similar thing on the D chord. Uh, I think Omi usually picks the high E string twice just on the D chord to make the, the rhythm work out correctly. So we've got So if I put all of that together Riff number two then, the main riff And this is really just based off of two power chord shapes. We've got an E power chord, fifth string root up at the seventh fret, and then moving that down two frets to a D power chord. So that's the basic idea, but it's the details that make this such a cool riff. And we've got some cool open strings going on here. So after we've played this E chord, got an open A string in there as well. So just lifting up your first finger to allow that open string to ring. And then another open A string just before you move down to the D. And then this bit's great as well. So we're sliding up from five to seven on the A string. And then we've just got a quick open third string, open G string. And that takes us back round to the start of the riff. Riff number three then. Uh, 
uh, this riff starts off up around the fifth fret and we've got a hammer on from five to seven on the A string and we're just letting the low E string ring out there as well and then five to four and then over to the fifth fret on the low E string um, then we've got this little slide down on the, the low E string from around about the seventh fret I think Okay, it's a really nice little detail in the riff, I think, that. Then open A string, and then we're into some more arpeggios. So it's C to D again, we're just arpeggiating the, the C chord from the root upwards. And then a similar thing on the D. I think just going as far as the B string, so... Riff number four then. So this is a nice series of descending arpeggios. It's all based off of the same shape. If you start with this E power chord and then just let the top three strings ring open. And we're just arpeggiating that shape. And moving that shape down two frets and now I'm just moving my first finger down and uh, you could move the whole power chord down but if you do that you want to avoid hitting this note here because that doesn't quite fit so uh, I prefer to leave my third finger where it is and just shift my first finger down and then we're down to a C power chord and then down to a B. So put all of that together and we have... Moving on to the first guitar solo, and I think this is a great little solo. It seems to be quite composed, it's memorable, it's melodic, and I really think it would make a great first guitar solo. If you're a beginner or someone first getting into lead guitar, then I think this solo would be perfect because it's fairly easy to learn, it's easy to memorize, and it contains a lot of the most important lead guitar techniques. It's all played using the E minor pentatonic scale. We've got what I would call position one E minor pentatonic up in the 12th position, and then part of the solo is played down at the fifth fret and you just got this little box down here on the lowest three strings which is part of the uh, the C form of the E minor pentatonic scale so opening lick goes like this we've got so we've got a little 12 to 15 hammer on on the B string to, to lead into the, the first note of the solo proper and we're bending at the 15th fret. And one thing I'm finding with this heavily detuned guitar is that the strings are a lot floppier so it's very easy to overcook these bends so you've got to be a, a little bit careful that with the tuning I think. Uh, so we're, we're bending that four times then. We're kind of coming down a blues scale. And then we've got a quick, a quick backward slide down to the seventh fret on the D string, and then the fifth fret. Next phrase goes like this. This is all fifth and seventh frets in that little box shape bending at the seventh fret on the D string. Then the next phrase. So we're, we're bending the A, G, A and E. And then so it's all 
little sort of variations on those kind of licks in this box shape. Then the whole thing repeats again, the previous four bars. So that goes like this. Um, so important to listen to the recording, I think, and uh, listen out for the, the, the rhythm and the melody there. Uh, then we're moving up to the, the 12th position. We've got more of these 15th fret bends. And that's that same descending pattern through the blues scale. Then we've got a high bend, 15th fret on the top string. Coming out of that bend and we've got a little unison thing. And then we're finishing off with another blue scale lick. So let me put all of that together. about two thirds of the way through the song there's a tempo change and we get this riff. <laughs> So this is all played up at the 12th fret and we've got an E and a G note which is going back and forth between those two notes. There's a little pull off from, from 15 to 12. And then I'm hearing an open low E string just to connect the riff together and then we've got three hits on this D power chord. So. I just want to quickly skip through the outro solo as well. It's a great solo, but I don't think it's such a learnable solo as the first one. And I probably recommend that you don't try and learn this one note for note. I'd be inclined just to skim through it and steal licks and ideas, and then you can kind of improvise your own thing. And once again, it's all E minor pentatonic based, and we're up in the 12th position. There's lots of unison bending going on. So this kind of idea where you're, you're fretting an E and then you're bending a D up to an E. So you've got the same note, kind of pair of notes rubbing up against one another. And we've got another Iomi trademark, which is these very fast trills. So that kind of thing, just between 12 and 15 on the high E string. More unison bending. More trills and then Moving over onto the B and the G for another series of unison bends. So I'm just reading this off of my transcription here. I've not actually learned this one note for note, but just more pentatonic stuff. Just uh, all very nice, but fairly standard pentatonic stuff. He goes into this fast repeated lick. Which is a, a classic kind of rock or a blues lick, bending at the 14th fret. And then 12 to 15 on the B. That kind of idea. Then the solo ends with more of these really fast trills. So just on the B and the high E strings in that minor pentatonic shape. And then some more pentatonic phrases. 
more unison bending. Something along those lines. If you're interested in getting into the real nitty gritty of this, then check out my tab, which I'm going to put up on my Patreon page. Let's talk Sabbath guitar sounds then. And it's fairly well known, I think, the kind of gear that Iommi used for those classic Sabbath records. Guitar, of course, was a Gibson SG. Amp, I think, was mostly a Laney supergroup. And the other key factor of his sound was a treble booster, a Dallas Rangemaster treble booster. It's those three things are really key factor in getting the Iommi sound, I think. So as usual, I'm trying to get close with the gear that I've got to hand. Guitar I've decided to use today is my Shergold Provocateur. This was actually given to me by Shergold a bit earlier this year and uh, really enjoying playing it. I think it's perfect for this kind of thing. It's a little bit SG-like, I think. It's got a great sound for rock. Um, this pickup in particular sounds great. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's a Seymour Duncan pickup of some kind. And uh, overall, I think it gives you a really nice rock tone. Amp-wise, I'm using my Marshall Studio Vintage, which is a Plexi-inspired Marshall. And then for the treble booster, I've got my Analog Man Beano Boost. Uh, I didn't actually realise this, but apparently the very first Beano Boost was designed for Iommi himself. He came to the guy who runs Analog Man. He didn't have his Dallas Rangemaster anymore and was looking for a replacement. And uh, Mike, Analog Man, offered to, to build him a clone. And uh, it's since become a, a classic pedal and, uh, in my opinion, one of the very best... Uh, Dallas Rangemaster clones. So that's the recipe for the Tony Iommi guitar sound and I'm actually reasonably pleased with the kind of sounds I've got happening here today in my studio. I think this combination of gear seems to work well and generally speaking I'm a huge fan of those Sabbath guitar sounds and they're so much better in my opinion than a lot of modern rock and metal guitar sounds which are just too distorted, too characterless and one-dimensional. There's nothing like those classic Sabbath sounds. So there we go. If you want music and tab, that's going to be up on my Patreon page and you can join my Patreon page for a very modest fee and get access to the full library of music, tabs, backing tracks that I've built up over the past couple of years. And I really enjoyed doing this video, so almost certainly there'll be some more Sabbath a bit later this year. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.